Give me a minute, guys, with all this cloth, okay? All right. Uh, I'll deal with the first aid after this. Okay. Blizzard's massive PR crisis. Okay. Hey everyone and welcome back to another video, this time one that's not about 8.3 and one that is extremely important. Now, yep. we have covered the Hong Kong situation in detail on our other channel, but yep. judging by the comments on this channel, our second channel's audience just does not, like it doesn't really overlap with this channel's audience, and right. most here think that I'm staying quiet on the topic. I'm not. Today we are going to be covering the entire situation, geopolitical context, you'll get some further reading, and just a lot of interesting stuff that I think is worth knowing, a follow-up in the situation as well as the impact on Blizzard. As it seems like things are a bit wild over there, with leadership not commenting and a spokesperson yep. saying that they are currently assessing the issue. First though, if you're interested in this story, They're I highly assessing recommend it. you read up on the actual okay. Hong Kong situation, as well as the persecution and internment of the Uyghur population of Xinjiang province, where over a million people are being interned, and of the wow. social credit score system that's being rolled out across the country there. Uh, want a phone Shit. number? Well, as of December 1st this year, that will require a full facial scan that will go to a government database. If if you say the wrong thing in social media over there, you'll lose social credit score that will impact your access to services, ability to rent, and your interest rates. What the fuck, dude? God damn, man. Like, I'm so Literally glad. Black Mirror, dude. I am so glad to live in America, dude. Let me say that right now. I am so glad to live in America. It is great. So my hope here is that this incident will lead to more people being aware that the dystopia is not the realm of science fiction any longer. No. Now, as always, this is a story of money, as Blizzard's financial interests are clashing with what should be their morals. Now, it's actually a problem for business everywhere. Even locally yep. in the Northern Irish Games cluster, I know people who cannot comment on this topic publicly for fear of losing financial backing. I mean, hell, right now, my yep. company, my studio, is talking with publishers, and uh, me talking about this could potentially risk us getting funding and that could be a low six figure thing so yep. i mean that just goes to show you the extent of chinese influence after all they are the world's largest huge market. single market for yeah. mobile games and there pc games with a pc True. gaming audience estimated to be greater than the entire population of the united states in the near future so with wow. that let's get into the story blitz chung is a hearthstone pro who was playing the grandmasters after winning he was on a taiwanese stream now of course it's actually playing called caustic, chinese obviously. taipei by blizzard in order to appease the mainland anyway he appeared on the stream wearing a gas mask that okay. is somewhat of a symbol of the recent wave of protests in Hong Kong, where many are protesting a new extradition law with the mainland. Okay. Now, it's fair to say that those have expanded okay. into a more general pro-democracy movement, and violence has been increasing. Now, when Blitz appeared, the two casters said that they would end his interview after he said what he had to say, and then the casters ducked under the table. Now, they did seem a bit nervous and giggly, so it's kind of hard to read into them. Now, Blitz went on to say, liberate Hong Kong, revolution... I feel like the, I feel like the guys that uh, the casters knew it was going to happen. I, I, I feel like as a cast mask, as my parents mask, well, yeah, it's just a joke, man. Um, I, I feel like they knew it was going to happen. It, it seemed pretty obvious to me of our age. The stream was then cut and the fallout began. Yeah. Blizzard responded quickly by banning Blitz Chung from professional yep. Hearthstone play for a year. They stripped him there of his is. win and of his prize money. Blizzard said this was for violating competition rules and constituted individual behavior which does not represent Blizzard or Hearthstone esports. Which is now true. that's what was said in a western post yeah. however they also responded locally. Now here's the deal. Working with languages is difficult and it's particularly the case here because Mandarin is an incredibly contextual, nuanced language, but thanks to some very, very helpful assistance from Spanking Jackson in our Discord server, we have an idea of it's what was said. Guy. In short, the statement amounted to a strongly worded disapproval of Blitz Chung and the caster's actions, as well as them stating their own political point of view. The post announced that the casters would never have the opportunity to work with Blizzard in the future, and concluded by stating, yeah. at the same time, yeah. we shall, as we always have, resolutely uphold our country honor of course now, our country's Absolutely. honor that does make sense in that the statements from a local blizzard office in the region guys please stop saying about saying it you guys saw it yesterday he's making a separate video and he's following it up to give people context about the conversation okay jesus christ 
But of course, it is an official communication from Blizzard Entertainment, who are a US company. So it's rather outlandish, but it is the type yeah. of statement that is quite normal for the region. So Blitz was fired for violating the competition rules. I suspect, right. though, that the severity of his punishment was informed by the sensitive political situation. I yeah. find it hard to believe that the same punishment would have been met out if he, say, mentioned US politics or mentioned the Hong Kong situation, but in the other direction. A reduction of winnings and maybe a minor ban for competing for a small period of time would have made sense here uh, but i think that because of i feel like if they had done anything right if they had cut the broadcasts and not punished them at all people still would have been outraged like i mean this is my opinion right it's like no matter what blizzard would have done people would have still been outraged now would they have them would they have been more outraged no i think they would have been slightly less outraged but they still would have said the same thing right i think that the issue fundamentally is that blizzard is operating in china and they're putting the interests of the Chinese and the government over the interests of what people in America think that they should do, right? That, 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 is the, that is the core issue. And it's not really just this, but it's like a bunch of other stuff too. Political situation, Blizzard were a lot more severe in their punishment. And really, when you think about how severe that punishment was, and then Blizzard's statement on M. Weibo, their local statement, it's obvious that it was to keep the party happy. Now, the two casters were also fired. That's likely for facilitating in Blitz's protest. Now, yep. Blitz Chung talked to the AFP afterwards saying, I sacrificed time hanging out with my friends and studying yep. because of this competition. Even though it seemed that I wasted four years of time, I have yep. something more important in my heart. If we lose the movement, Hong Kong will end forever. So overall, I think he did violate the competition rules. And I think that's yep. the point here. He knew he was going to lose a lot. That's what made Makes a statement powerful. He purposefully broke those rules, knowing he'd probably lose everything, but he did it anyway. That's, I think that yeah. makes it a powerful, like, intention statement. Uh, I so agree with that. Technically, like, he wasn't banned for the content of his speech, but that's only a technicality. Again, yeah. as I said, when you look at this, uh, the statement Blizzard issued in Weibo and the severity of the punishment, I think it's obvious that the content of his speech was a major factor in the severity of his punishment. Now, regardless, right. by punishing him so severely here, all the Blizzard did was ensure that his statement would spread far, and it did. It trended worldwide in Twitter, being covered by mainstream outlets across the world. Yep. This was also a very timely issue, though, as the NBA recently had a similar situation, one that was- Why didn't they do it with a delay? Like, why didn't they do it with a delay? That's why I'm, I'm honestly curious. Like, why? It's like, from now on, it's like, anytime you broadcast an event like this, you should do it with a delay. They probably didn't think of it. Then whoever didn't think of it should be fucking fired because that you should know that there's a bunch of fucking agitation going on in the country. You should know that the fucking people leading the country don't want the agitation and you should just expect that to happen. Like anybody should do that. This gives them publicity. Not good publicity. It doesn't help Blizzard. Blizzard, Blizzard, I think will be unfazed by this in the long run or even in the short run. I think they'll be unfazed by this, but it doesn't help them. It certainly doesn't help them. It just makes things more contentious for no reason. There's no reason for that. That What they should have done is they should have ran it with a fucking delay. And then the moment that the interview went south, any interview, anything, they just cut it ahead of time. Holy fuck. Like, that, 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 like how do you fuck that up? Like, does anybody ever talk about that? It's a huge mistake. I, I, I don't get it. Uh, I, I, I don't get it at all. Like, why why would you not do that? Uh, fuck China. It makes so much... Yeah, it just makes complete fucking sense. Maybe they will now. Maybe they should now. Because that seems like a much better fucking idea than going and having these big fucking problems happening in China because somebody says something that you don't want them to say. Like, it doesn't matter what it is. Like, they can say that, oh, I hate black people or something like that. And that would still be bad. And Blizzard still should make it to where that never appears on a broadcast because it makes it dangerous for advertisers. No, really. You want to make sure that all of this stuff never shows up. Like, I don't know why anybody does a live broadcast without any sort of a delay anymore. It's fucking insane. I, I, I can't believe it.
was actually handled a bit better by its leadership. Of course, Apple have also been in hot water recently for pulling a Hong Kong map application that protesters were using to crowdsource information. Now, thus yeah. far, Blizzard president Jay Allen Brack and uh, Bobby Kotick of Activision Blizzard have not responded, though a yeah. spokesperson for the company actually told Engadget that they are currently assessing the situation. Things on the ground, though, have been a little bit different. Blizzard's Irvine campus has as its center point a statue of Thrall riding a wolf, yep. with a compass beneath it and the compass pointing to company values. Two of those eight values, Every Voice Matters and Think Globally, were taped over by Blizzard staff yesterday. Then additionally, a small number of Blizzard staff did an umbrella protest yep. at the statue, and one of the particular How do you get a staffers duck posted umbrella? a picture of the group to the Hearthstone subreddit. Certainly a brave enough move. Now, the umbrellas are significant as they reference the 2014 protests during which the umbrellas became a symbol of resistance after right, police right, right. Uh, pepper sprayed uh, dispersing This is part of the video we talked about yesterday. For election transparency. Now, these protests did not stop with Blizzard staff, though, as we've seen Blitz's fellow Hearthstone players join in, with one yep. collegiate league team holding up a protest sign, leading to a very awkward cut in the stream, yet more awkward casters not really knowing how to deal with the situation. They wouldn't need to if they had just had a fucking delay. Just run your tournaments with a fucking delay. Run your tournaments with a fucking delay. Pay a producer to make sure to cut this shit before it happens. The moment they pulled that up, they should have just immediately cut it and known that shit was going to happen. Run it with a fucking delay. And yet more deleted Twitch VODs. Holy There's even shit. more though, as one of the BlizzCon Hearthstone casters has pulled out. So yep. Brian Kibler, a longtime Hearthstone caster, blogged that he agreed that Blitz did violate the tournament rules, he but did. that he felt that the severity of the punishment was clearly informed by political and business concerns. Which that Blizzard it was. had made an example of Blitz, and that he could not partake at BlizzCon in good faith as a caster unless something changed. Then we've also seen a longtime mod of the Hearthstone on subreddit quit and protest as well as just many players across the world boycotting blizzard games you know posting yep. screenshots of deleted accounts that sort of thing next uh, though, we accusations of blizzard blocking account deletions now this came via just a minute sorry guys Sorry about that. Okay. A tweet that got a lot of traction. However, it was later proved to be false. With the original poster of okay. that viral tweet tweeting a follow-up message saying that actually it wasn't the case, and Vice News attesting, uh, you know, showing that accounts actually could be deleted. Uh Vice tested this and they could delete an account. So, yeah, big fucking surprise that... Uh you know, like, something like this. Oh, they made it to where you can't delete accounts. That's such bullshit. Everybody knew that was bullshit. And um, I even had a success in deleting a, um, an account when I tested it, so okay. it overall seems like that was either a temporary error or outage or something like that. Now, that said, as a part of protest, we've seen May be turned into somewhat of a pro-Hong Kong symbol in order to get Overwatch banned in China. Now, it's an interesting move that actually just could gonna work get if it caught on. So, Chinese users of Weibo used Winnie the Pooh memes to mock Xi Jinping, the um, leader. Now, okay. that resulted in poor Winnie getting absolutely obliterated. And I suppose that means that if the May thing actually actually did catch on and it was being used on the ground, we could actually see the same thing happen. So well, they're scared I of the character. I wonder if a Warcraft character was to turn into a, you know, pro-protest symbol, yeah. which one do you think it would be? Now, we've also seen responses from U.S. Yeah, politicians just get rid of the with character. Democrat Ron Wyden of Oregon and Republican Marco Rubio of Florida commenting with Wyden saying the Blizzard have humiliated themselves for a quick buck mm -hmm. and Rubio taking it as an opportunity yep. to talk about China's worldwide leverage. Yep. We've also seen other companies weigh in, including Epic Games, who have said that they would not punish a player or creator for stating political opinions i don't believe that now this one is in i believe they won't ban people for criticizing china but i don't think that they'll they'll have a blanket 
uh, invitation for people to say their political opinions. I, I, I don't believe that at all. Because that, that only makes sense until somebody says something they disagree with, and then, you know, it'll be different. Because they are 48.4% owned by Tencent. Activision yeah. Blizzard are only 5% owned by Tencent. So what gives here? Well, here's the deal. I think, anyway, Epic Games are a privately held company, with founder Tim Sweeney being the majority shareholder. That means that Epic are not susceptible to the same market pressures yeah. that Activision Blizzard are. They simply don't have a stock that can drop. As for Blizzard, though, well, Blizzard are a business yep. unit of Activision Blizzard, and, uh, well, Activision Blizzard stock had a minor dip, but it's mostly holding its value. Why? Well, because the markets will have seen this to be the correct move. Indeed, yep. much of this comes down to financial interests. China yep. is big money, but it's not even that. What China really is, is growth. It's the fastest growing market for gaming and for esports. So that means that everyone is rushing for a slice of that pie. And the prevailing opinion there is that if you lose ground there now, it's going to cost you billions and billions in lost revenue in the future. Right, they want now, to there establish are two more a foothold now. This, though. One of them is financial, the other one is ethical. So Blizzard's leadership team has a fiduciary duty. This means yep. they have a legal obligation to act in the best interest of their shareholders. Now, this could be part of why the decision was made. Could they have successfully took the hit, though, and argued that taking that hit was, you know, serving their Western audience and was in the, like, long-term health interests of their company? I think they probably could. So this is, I think it's more... I think they could if they wanted to get voted out next time there was an officer meeting for the fucking shareholders, sure. The thing is, like, even if Blizzard took a stand on this, they'd just be writing their own fucking wills. Like, because the people that would take a stand on it, those people would just get voted out next time, and they'd lose their job, and then they'd just hire more people to go back into China. Like, so it, it, I even it, that that's that's the problem with publicly traded companies is that the investors just want to make more money. That's the way it goes just an excuse being real with you secondly though there's also the safety of their chinese employees if yeah. blizzard you know did really anger the party there could have been penalties for their local employees then there is another angle and that's called mobile so it's one of the most successful mobile launches of all time by all accounts it's an excellent translation of its source material of course it will be big in china and is made by tencent games its early performance was responsible for a stock rally so i suppose that's yet another reason why it would be a bad time to piss off china for blizzard yeah. Overall, though, this could not come to worse time for Activision Blizzard generally and Blizzard Entertainment specifically. Blizzard have been seen by the market to have been underperforming in recent, uh, recent years with just slow content, basically, and BlizzCon 18 being a wash. BlizzCon 19 is likely to be their largest ever. We're probably going to see Diablo that. 4, a new WoW expansion, and potentially Overwatch 2. They have a lot of eggs in that BlizzCon basket, and I think it would be foolish to think that this situation won't impact that. Like, yeah, if they we'll talk about Diablo immortal on stage i wouldn't be surprised if the crowd just started like shouting slogans at them their qa sessions they're bound to be a mess i imagine they'll try to confiscate as many protest related items as they can in the front door but ultimately it's going to be a hard time that is unless they do something now blizzard have said that they are assessing the situation and all I can say is they'll have to choose their next words very carefully. Ultimately, what I believe they're going to try to do is to appease their Western audience and the Chinese party. But ultimately there, they are going to have a problem of incompatible interests and incompatible values. So... Well, that's exactly right. There's literally no way you can make both people happy. Like, the Chinese government wants censorship. The US audience doesn't want censorship. What do you do? Like, I mean, that, that, you know, what, what do you do? I mean, there's no way to handle it. I, I, I don't know what to say. There you go. That's a look at China's overall media influence. Now, if you would like to learn more about their geopolitical influence, yeah. I would recommend that you read up on their Belt and Road Initiative and how they are using debt traps and predatory investment to increase their foreign holdings and uh, just do a lot of stuff in emerging markets. Uh, really, geopolitics is a very interesting topic. It's a very important topic, and I think it's one that's... 
I think it's one that a lot of reading is it's just not done on. I think, you know, there's a lot of there's a lot of headlines, right, in the, you know, in the news, but the actual reading into the issues and what's really going on, the deeper stuff, that is often left out of the public discourse. And if anything, my hope would be that the increased awareness uh, sort of brought onto these issues by this situation will will just lead to more people sort of being educated and knowing what's going yeah. on in the world because I think that ultimately is a very very important thing for all of us. So anyway, there you go. That is uh, that's my current thoughts on this situation. The next update that we'll do in this will be back on the second channel though. I did this in this channel so that everyone here cuz I think most of this audience doesn't even know about the second channel. Um so I just wanted it to be crystal clear in no uncertain terms what I think about this on the Warcraft channel. Okay. Uh, that said, we will have an episode of the Roundup on our news channel tomorrow. Uh, yes, tomorrow's Friday, so tomorrow. And if there are any small updates, we'll put it there. Now, that said, if Blizzard, like if Jay Allen Brack does have a big response, then I think obviously, it would make sense. Yeah, obviously, we'll see this more about this. As well, likely rolled into our regularly scheduled Warcraft news, which is uh, normally over the weekend. Regularly so anyway, scheduled there you go. That's programming. My thoughts. Let me know what you think down below. And with that, I will see you next time. Okay. <clears throat> so. This is exactly pretty much what everybody expected to see. You need to lower your ideals of freedom if you want to suck on the warm teat of China, South Park. That's about right. Uh, Blizzard is going to be a real-life raid. Oh, BlizzCon is going to be a real-life raid. I, I don't know why people think that, like, BlizzCon is going to be some sort of fucking thing where people come and hold Blizzard to take Blizzard to task. We're going to make sure that, you know, we let them know how we feel. It's People are going to get pissed off. There's like maybe one guy that's going to ask a question at the Q&A. He'll be removed from the stage. There'll be a few tweets about it, and that's going to be it, right?